Welcome back guys. This is the Painting Wookie and it's week five which means issue five. Let's get to it. In this week's issue we get our magazine, issue five. We get our exclusive model for this series which is the Primaris Captain. You can see it down here, over here. Uh, and we also get our second pop-up which is Dynastic Hierarchy. So, without further ado, let's get to it. In this issue, uh, we're looking at Primaris Captain uh, for Battle Records. Uh, we also look at Tools of Wars, Ingalore, The War for Ramesses, Megaria, Heart of the Storm, and Dynastic Hierarchy Fallout. So, that is what coming with the law. Uh, obviously, building the Primaris captain painting the primary captain and we go through our fifth mission which is rallying the troops so let's get started primary captain decorated company commander a space marine captain is responsible for commanding an entire company of his battle brothers with centuries of battle experience each captain is a strategic genius a captain leads from the front by his example show his men know what it is to be after of the adeptus of starters and from his teachings Shall they learn the trade of battle in the Emperor's name? Rebuke to Kieran. As Captain Wolgi, we've got the Imperial Laurel. They are awarded for an act of great valour that led to victory for the chapter. The Master crafted a power sword, which is quite cool there. Um, they also carry their Crux Terminatus. Marksman's Honour, which is these gold plated shell casings, are awarded for accurate shooting. Cape, because obviously a captain has to have a cape. Plasma pistols. Brilliant. I love plasma pistols. Uh, quite old school 30k, so yay. So here says that these range weapons fire blasts of superheated energy capable of burning through reinforced armor. Uh, we've got iron skulls. Honor badges are used by the Space Marines to recognize their might and battle prowess of their greatest warriors. These badges are usually worn or painted on the armor of the recipient. Captains have earned multiple honor badges in their years of long service. A battle record, and we get to name our captain. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we get, and as always, uh, D6. I've uh, got a 6. Ramesses Cirrus. Uh, I'll be pointing that, putting that later on. Ramesses Cirrus is his name. Uh, title of uh, 1. The Steel Dragon. Okay, war gear details. Leadership style. Let's see what. Two, fights in the midst of the battle line, inspiring the troops. So I just still name two again. Okay. Bane of the Fleshless. Yeah. And number five, Sword. Friends demise. Uh, sorry, fiends demise. Fiends demise. So let's put the S there. Yeah. On to the law now. Tools of war. Whether based aboard a colossal starship or within the looming walls of a fortress monastery, all space marine chapters maintain a vast armory stacked high with weapons and armour ready to be unleashed upon the Emperor's foes. There is no greater ally to a space marine than the humble bolt rifle. Treat your weapon as you would a brother. Recruits, for it shall be your salvation. Brother Sergeant Amnon. Quite a cool cut quote there. Below weapons, the labyrinthine vaults of a Space Marine chapter's armory are filled with a variety of deadly melee weapons, most of them wielded by officers and veterans. These weapons have seen centuries of service and spilled oceans of blood. We've got the Astartes Chainsaw, the Power Sword that the Captain has, Power Axe, Thunder Hammer, probably my favourite, Power Fist, and for librarians we get the Four Star. For all the weapons in the armory, for all the technological might the Space Marine may unleash upon his foes, there is no weapon as reliable and effective as the sharpened steel of a combat blade. Never underestimate its value. Keep your blade oiled and close at hand, brothers, for a time will come when you shall require its edge. For all the terror that a chainsaw or bolt may inspire, there is nothing the foe fears more than the glint, sorry, the glint of a combat blade in the darkness. Sergeant Timo Pushkin, Imperial Fist, 4th Company. Got to give it to him. Right. The War for Ramesses, Megaria. The moon known as Megaria orbits the gas giant 
Gliantha, the largest planet in the Ramesses system. For generations, this desolate, dusty rock has been host to the majority of Ramesses' heavy industry. Since the current invasion, Hav and the Moon's refineries have fallen silent. Get a few bits, um, recon report files, uh, strike force where it kind of in Ionicus where it kind of falls. So it gives you a bit of that. It sets the the scene for the battle in Megaria, so that's quite cool. Upon arriving in the Ramses system, Imperial Van Scouts undertook detailed scans on the industrial moon Megaria. These reports have identified several key locations and points of interest. Two Space Marine Strike Forces have already made landfall on the moon's surface and began advancing upon the Necron position. Both elements have encountered stiff resistance. Heart of the storm. Uh, what is this? From their lair deep within the warp, the bloodthirsty Crimson Slaughter have emerged to strike at the Imperium. In their path stand the Fulminators, a chapter of primary space marines. Beneath the spires of the Shrine world, world Timir's pride, loyalist and traitor clash in the midst of a violent storm. Okay, so we learn a battle between the loyalist uh, chapters and the traitor chapter so uh, yeah we can learn a bit more about the heresy that happened so we also get the uh, pop-up um, dynastic hierarchy of the necrons necron society is organized to strict dynastic codes from the imperious nobility all the way down to the mighty legions that march out to enforce their master's wills few tomb worlds break from the, this rigid martial order for it has served the necron race well for many thousands of years. In the hierarchy of the necrons we get the pharaoh which is the kind of you know that we've got the royal court the praetorians and the primary get outcasts the victorious that we did last issue flayed ones which i know are coming um, and that is if you want to know what's coming for hannah for hannah and i think also the hobby corner does as well stuff about that so go and check them out uh legions uh legions oh well, okay the legions are kind of the, yeah the, the, the troops like warriors and mortals and then we have the canoptics and um which is just kind of like the scarabs and stuff like that and then the shards um which says here seat and shards are once gods the imprisoned sight and shards now serve as weapons so shard of the shattered star gods now lower than the lowest slaves which is quite cool so um basically they were gods and the negros came along and said uh we're gonna enslave you why not Put a bit of a necron arm 
a skull there, some bits of screw there to signify a model. Yeah, and that's about it. On to painting. Rallying the troops. With his troops scattered and fully engaged with the Necrophore, Captain Rasmus Sirius, in command of the Ultramans force, seeks to rally the Space Marines and ensure the Necrophore is defeated. A heroic intervention. With his troops separated and bogged down in brutal hand to hand combat, the Ultramans Captain Rasmus Sirius must stand alone against the Necrophore. Armed with a mastercrafted power sword and a lethal plasma pistol, he aims to lead by example, cut a path through the Necro invaders and rally his troops to a swift victory. In his way, however, stand many murderous Scorpion destroyers, desperate to slay the living. Destroy the destroyers, forge a path. Having been isolated from the rest of the, his troops during the chaotic light fighting beneath the Megarius surface, the Primaris captors Rasmus Sirius has finally battled his way into the Necron facility. He must now forge a path through the shadowy corridors and locate his soldiers. If he can reunite the survivors, the captain's leadership skill and martial prowess may turn the tide of the battle and send the Necrons fleeing back to the light, lightless void from whence they came. Standing against Captain Rasmus Sirius, it's the Bone Collectors, Lady Captain, Scorpit destroys the Bone Collectors are driven only by the desire to slaughter the living. Having been awakened, they stalk the shadows of the Necron facility, hunting for Space Marine to slay. The Necron base's connected defenders have detected a lone warrior and transmitted his location to the murderous destroyers. Presented with an opportunity to end another life, the Bone Collectors, the insane Necrons closing, blade limbs twitching in eager anticipation of the violence to come. We learn about armor penetration um, on both sides. So we also have two millimeter weapons for the captain and just the blades for the scorpion destroyers. Um, the objective is basically all out battle, all out basically last man standing. So with that said, let's get going. So it is. Space Marines turn one first, so Captain goes first, so um, let's see how it plays out. Um, so we are going to go um, over here. Um, wings and five attacks so I can actually shoot um, I can actually shoot um, and then I can charge so and um, remember that we if we advance we can't charge so have an advance but I am gonna shoot um, pistol to it's just one dies with a ballistic score of two plus. So, um, let's see what we get. <sighs> ah, okay, that failed. Not to worry. I am going in, and I've got a master 
crack this password, which means I've got five attacks. Um, five attacks, isn't it? Yes, five attacks, and it's a two plus. So, with an AP minus three. That is rubbish. Uh, well, actually, not rubbish. Um, four hits, minus three, which means it's a six plus, I think. Yeah, so he needs a uh, six plus. Ah, he saved two. Okay, so um, destroyers have three wounds, so um, not bad. There we go. Got it. So that's one wound there. Okay. Necro's turn. Over here. Same goes for him. I'm not going to bother moving. Um, no shooting, so um, charging, basically. So I need a four. That is six, so he gets in. Um, and let's see, I need from him. Okay, a four. Yeah, so he's well in. Um, now they have. This drone's have three attacks. Crap. <laughs> three attacks. Um, the captain only has six wounds. Each attack has an AP minus three. But, but, Iron Halo. This model has a four plus invulnerable save. So, I get to roll saves of four plus. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do these two first, which is six dice. And that is. A three plus, so we got one, two, three, three, four, five hits. Okay, let's see. Four plus. Oh, okay, so three damage for now. Whoa. Um, wow. Okay. I've got three damage. So I've got three wounds left. Okay, and him, the last one. And a three plus, two, four plus saves. Ah, oh, God, good. <sighs> Saved, okay. Five attacks for my, oh no, actually, I've got a pistol and I can shoot with my pistol. Um, Unlike other ranged weapons, uh, so unlike other ranged weapons, this weapon can be used when within engagement range of any enemy model, but it can only target models within engagement range when doing so. So I've got one. I'm gonna shoot him. Um, yes, hits minus three AP, so that is six plus. Yes, destroyed. Okay, dead. And now I've got five attacks. Um, five attacks. I'm not going to split them. I am going to go all in with him, on him. So, or oh, I can split. I don't know. Actually, don't know. Let me know in the comments if I can split or not. I am going to play as cannot be split. So I'm going to declare all my attacks to him, and that is five attacks. On two plus, so that is four hits. That is AP minus three, so that means six plus. And oh, he's dead. Two Necrons dead. Whoa, okay. Necron turn. We have three dice. Um, three hits. Four plus. And only one safe. Oh, only one safe. That means I have only got one wound left. 
one wound left. That is bad. Okay. So I think oh, I think this is gonna be the last turn. Who knows? Okay. Firstly, pistol misses. Of course he misses. And uh, power sword, five attacks, three plus, AP minus three. Uh, we got all hits, all hits. Is it two plus? So it's all hits, all hits. Okay, so five saves of six plus. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Five hits, dead. Bye bye. Pium, pium. Um, I'm quite happy. <laughs> um, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted the Space Marine to win. So um, they pull ahead. That is three two towards the Marine. The space the captain has done very well. He has done very well. He's destroyed three Scorpion destroyers. So I am very pleased. Ramses Cirrus is a beast and this prize is going into his battle records. Oh yeah, well done Captain Ramses Cirrus. Overall, great issue. I kind of like the mini. Um, I like building it, like painting it. Can't wait to get more paints to kind of finish it. Um, and I really enjoyed making the base, so uh, I had a few personal touches and I added a bit of a symbol to my symbol to the backpack. Uh, I must say that my favourite bit of this week's issue has been the mission. And I am totally biased. Captain Rasmus Cirrus beat the three Necron destroyers, okay? He was a beast and I am so glad he won. Okay, I was rooting for him and he won and he kind of behaved himself. So that was my highlight. But the law, everything, um, learning about it and painting, great. I mean, yeah, I think it was a good issue. Um, again, I like Warhammer and I think this is a, a nice way of uh, going bit by bit. And as I said, I'm still keeping with it issue by issue, week by week, so uh, that is good. Um, next week, is the aggressors um, new mission new law uh, new minis so so yeah can't wait and don't forget to hit the like button uh, if you like the video and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed and hit also the bell button so that you can receive notifications when I post videos and that will help me a lot it will help the channel a lot so I'm the painter Wookie and um, and see you later bye for now